Yet, when they heard Quran, all of a sudden you see tears start coming down their face. And maybe they'll even say, what is that? One time I was given a lecture for the elderly in San Antonio, Texas. They asked me to come and talk about what is the Islamic perspective on death and dying. So it was for old people. And in it I had recited some Quran. My voice is not all that great. And I don't claim to have a very good, you know, kira of Quran. But... Anyway, after it was over, this old man came up to me and they were all thanking me for coming out and they're very sweet. And he said, man, that's the best singing I ever heard. <laughs> I said, singing? I was singing. I didn't sing anything because, you know, I used to be a Christian and I was a music minister. So obviously I'm thinking, did I sing something? But he was talking about the Quran. So how much we've got going for us we take it for granted let's talk about hadith again truth is critical to us do we accept hadith if somebody come in and say hey here's a hadith blah 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 and you say well i never heard it before and the guy says uh, i didn't either but you know i saw it on the back of an advertising on something and it looked like a good hadith so where, where did it come from nobody knows but still, it sounds nice, you know. So let's use it. Incorporate it into a talk or a program. Nobody would do that. They wouldn't do it. Where, where did it come from? You don't know where it came from? What book did it come out of? Who cares? It sounds nice, you know. Something really nice. You get those probably on the internet. You get email. Some brother or sister will send you something and you read it and you're going, uh, this doesn't sound right. But they're telling you, if you pass this on to X amount of people or somebody else got it and they you know, passed it on and they got some money and the other guy, he didn't pass it on, he dropped dead the next day or something like that. You're going, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm definitely not going for this now. This is not a slum. It doesn't work like that. We're not going to be impressed if you come up with a hadith, especially if there's no Arabic for it. See, what's the Arabic for it? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows? And you don't know where it came from? I'm sorry, I don't think it's a hadith. I think you pulled it off the internet. I think you got some little warm fuzzy that somebody sent to you and you just put a bismillah across the top and a salam alaikum across the bottom and sent it out to everybody on your list. I think that's what you did. Yeah? You know what I'm talking about. You've seen them, right? So, but if somebody shows you where the hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari or in Sahih Muslim and you can look at it and you said, there it is, right there. All of a sudden, this is part of our deen. It's not just a nice saying. It's part of our life. It's not an option to us all of a sudden. It's real. Yeah? Okay. For the other people, they don't have that. They don't even know what that is. They've never been exposed to real truth in their lives. They use the word. They know there's a difference between a lie and the truth, basically. But for many, even people with education, even people with degrees, people with social status, people with responsible positions in the world, still have trouble differentiating between the truth and falsehood. Is that right or wrong? Remember Clinton? I did not. You remember what he said? Huh? Huh? And when they caught him, I won't say red handed, but they had clear proof. And what did he say? What I meant was. <laughs> did he? 
Yeah. And what about Nixon? Maybe some of you are too young to remember Richard Milhouse Nixon. I was there. I remember it real well. He put his hands like this. He said, I am not a crook. And then they proved that he was a big liar. <coughs> what about <coughs> the one we got now? <laughs> now remember, I got to go back home, so I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> For a Muslim, the truth is not just being accurate in what you say. It also means that you're going to be accurate in your intention to go with it. Because you could be accurate, real accurate, and still be lying. Because you could just not say all the truth. You could just say part of the truth. Or, or, you can say all the truth, but not let the person understand how it comes, what it's relevant to. That'd still be a lie. I've never met any other group of people. I've met individuals, of course, who are truthful. But I never met a group of people more responsible for giving messages correctly than I have with Muslims. I never saw this from other people. When somebody gives you a mana and they said, I need you to tell Abdullah that I'm real sorry I couldn't see him before I caught the plane, I have to go. So when you see him, tell him I said, now your brain is already clicking in, Abdullah, he's, the Shaykh is leaving, he's giving me a, an amana, and I got to remember what he said. So when you go to him, you're going to say, Shaykh had a message, it's amana, I have to give it to you. Now, even if I said stuff that you don't particularly agree with, you will tell him exactly what I said because that was the amount I given to you. True or false? There's no doubt about it. You have no idea, really, the value of the truth unless you've lived without it. And then when it comes to you, it is sweet. And it is beautiful. And those who live it, speak it, and practice it, they're beautiful people. I want to mention something to you that I've heard quite a lot of in the last 17 years. And I take exception to it and I don't agree with it. Because I don't believe it's the truth, although I've heard a lot of Muslims say it. The statement says, if you want to know Islam, you have to look to the Quran and the Sunnah, don't look at the Muslims. Because if you look at the Muslims, you don't want to know. Even the statement that someone said, if I would met Muslims first, I wouldn't even become a Muslim. Have you heard statements like this? Some of you may have fallen into this trap. This is not true. It only has some tiny truth in it, but it is not true from a person who was not Muslim, didn't even know any Muslims, till I was in my late 40s. I immediately could see the difference between Muslims and non-Muslims on that one topic alone, the truth, and how valuable it is. So I say, if you want to know what's Islam, look to the good Muslims. Because if you're saying, if you said you can't find Islam, and like this is some sheikh even said it like this, that he went to Europe and when he came back, he made the statement that he found Islam without Muslims, and then when he gets back home, he finds Muslims without Islam. A very famous statement, I'm not going to say who said it, it doesn't matter. The point is that is not a good statement. That does more damage than it does good. In the Jummah Khutbah, the Imam is supposed to admonish the community, and there's no doubt about it. 
but he still has a responsibility not to go too far and that's going too far because when you do that here's what the next thing will happen and it has happened we find ourselves criticizing the Muslims for their shortcomings and praising the non-Muslims and they don't even have the Aqidah to know La ilaha illallah. Have you heard this happen? Yeah. I'll be saying, oh man, you know, this guy so and so, he's not a Muslim, but man, you know, he was very good with the business dealing we had with him and he was uh, la 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 and he was on time. Wow. And then immediately on the Muslims, they don't pray and they don't fast and so on and so on and so on. And without realizing it, without thinking about it, you're absolutely doing the worst thing you can do to your own iman. You are basically throwing your belief in the toilet. You got me? It's not good. What is the order in Islam on how to look at your brother? If he makes even a mistake, do you immediately criticize or give an excuse? Give him an excuse? But only once? Twice. Three? Seven times 70. Seven times 70. What do you give him one? Example. We see our brother. Here comes Tariq. He's coming along. Hey, man, there's Tariq over there. Hey. Oh, my God. Man, look. He's got a can of beer in his hand. Oh, stop for a lot. What's that? Is that a cigarette he's got too? I don't know. It looks like he's got cigarettes and beer and everything. And look where he's going, man. Huh? He, went, he went in that place over there with, with, with all the women and stuff. Oh, wow. Mm. Stuck for the law, man. Mm. And he's always out there in Padre acting like he's some guy. Oh, man. Next time I see somebody, anybody, Hey, you know Tarek? Tarek who? You know Tarek? I'm up there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, I don't want to say anything about anybody, but you have never seen him with any beer cans, have you? <laughs> <coughs> or smoking or going over that place over on such and such Main Street over there with the, huh? You saw him over there? I mean, I don't want to say anything, but you know. <laughs> I mean, I got to tell the truth. <laughs> When Sheikh was here from America, he told us we got to tell the truth. I got to tell you, man, uh, stop for a law. We didn't give him one excuse. What would happen? What would happen on the day of judgment if we found that what we said about him got spread around and other people spread it around and it got back and it damaged his reputation, damaged him? And all he would say is, Allah knows best. Allah knows best. But then it comes on us. And come to find out what he was doing, there's a hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever clears the way for the believers is getting an act of charity for each little thing he gets rid of. So when he reaches down and picks up that empty beer can, half empty beer can, and a cigarette that was laying there, Look for the closest place to throw it, and there's a door over there. You stick it in there, throw it in the trash, and you went on his business. And you did what? Ooh, big problem. You didn't even give him one excuse. So I want to come back now to our topic because it's very critical for us today. In spite of what other people are doing to us and attacking and saying the things that they're saying, we cannot do what they do. Now, this has been going on since before I got to Islam. Some of the Christians were down in South Africa really going after their business. That's what they do. That's one group, the Jehovah's Witness. There's another group called the Mormons, but Jehovah's Witnesses were down there really pumping it up and blowing it out, talking with all their spiel that they've got. <coughs> 